Welcome back to Behind the Scenes. Today, I'm going to take up part two of different aspects around a film set and the lingo and the terms that are used and who some of the key positions are, what that means, how these, these roles integrate within the making of a film or television show. First off, the camera. Uh, there's different things uh, in terms of how the camera shoots and things like that. So uh, there's a pan shot. Pan shot is simply the camera uh, focusing on one thing and then moving another direction to pick up something else. It can be following the action of somebody. So you pan to follow the person who's doing something, taking you somewhere else. Or it could be the person turns and the camera goes to see what they were looking at. Uh, different things like that, or it could be that it starts up at the top of a mountain and pans down to establish the house and the yard and that sort of thing. So any sort of movement of the camera can, uh, can be considered a pan. A montage. A montage is a series of little vignettes almost that tell a story. It could be if you want to show the passage of time, which is what it generally is. So let's say you want to show kids at school who were bored. So you start off there in school and then you see them sitting listening and then a little while later you see them sort of doodling or they're half sleeping a little later. Now maybe you show a little bit of them having a, throwing things, throwing little you know spit wads or something around. It's usually not that many little shots, but it will show some sort of passage of time. Uh, a pickup shot. Uh, pickup shots are shots filmed after principal, the main filming, is completed. And they are also called pickups or reshoots, and they're shot for a variety of reasons, both logistical and creative. And the extent of this additional shooting can range from a couple of days to multiple weeks, or it could just be, in our case, you know, they missed something and so it's, it's a half hour, an hour, maybe a couple of hours of work. Uh, to cheat or a cheat shot is um, like they might say, cheat to your right. So it just means instead of where you were standing, just to move a slightly so that you clear something, you clear a shadow or you clear somebody's shoulder or, or whatever you need to do, uh, a cheat shot, can be like maybe two people were standing further apart uh, because it was a wider shot. Now for, they want a two shot. So they'll cheat the people closer together so that the frame can be closer. So things like that, anything that isn't exactly the way it was in the big long shot is considered cheating in some way. Anything that is a trick you know, isn't exactly the way it is, would be considered a cheat. Clear the shot. <laughs> Sometimes they'll call that before rolling. They'll go, clear, clear the shot. That just means anything um, that's going to be seen or clear the frame. The frame would be what the camera can see. So anybody who was setting things, setting props, anybody who was doing last minute adjustments on lights, any actors who were standing around talking, any crew people that were having discussions, it's like, okay, just everybody clear the camera, clear the shot, clear the frame so we can shoot. Strike the set, the set's done, it's going to be taken away, it's gonna be dismantled if it's just a temporary set. A hot set. A hot set is one that is all decked out, set dressed, and ready to be filmed. So usually they'll put signs up that say hot set, which means don't touch anything, don't move anything, don't remove anything, because this set is going to be shot soon. Gorilla shooting. Uh, that's usually something that's done like on really little, basically no budget things. I know when I was doing little student films, we would kind of do gorilla shooting. So we might go someplace um, and sort of grab a shot in front of a building that we didn't have permits for or permission, but it was just for our little acting school. So it wasn't something where there was no money involved, there was nothing, money wasn't going to be made, nobody was gonna see it except our students. Um, I've also worked on little independent things where you know I wasn't involved, but somebody went out, they needed a nightclub shot, and so they sort of you know snuck little cameras in and shot sort of people dancing in a nightclub because they couldn't afford to get all those extras or they couldn't afford to book a location like that or create a location, so they'd sort of grab those shots on the fly. Um, so anything like that has come to be known as guerrilla shooting. 
Another film term is setting up a shot, something called a French over. So you've heard of over the shoulders, like if, if the camera's here and I'm talking to somebody and the camera shoots here and then from the other person shoots the same way. A French over would be like, let's say two people are in the front seats, the driver's seat and the passenger seat of a car. If the camera is behind them and shoots over this side to the person who's driving, so the camera's like back here shooting that direction and the other, those are considered French overs. We used to refer a lot to a raking shot, uh, particularly at the kitchen table where we had however many of us, four or five of us on one side of the kitchen table, when the camera would sort of set up at one end of that bench and sort of catch everybody on that side of the of the table, uh, we would call that, that a raking shot. And often a raking shot is only <laughs> two or three people. And we used to joke with as many people as we had and as tight as we had to film, oh, this is a raking 20 <laughs> because they were trying to get a little bit of everybody in one shot in a particular area so that they didn't have to individually set up for that many shots. Uh, crossing the line, as far as camera goes, or crossing the camera, that is one of the trickiest things for people to get used to. So say I'm sitting here and I'm talking. Now, if I'm talking to somebody over there, the camera is, we have formed a line from me to that side of the camera. So when I leave, if I left the scene then, and I went that direction, then all of a sudden, if the camera comes in closer and moves over here, let's say there was somebody else and I'm now talking to somebody over there, but the camera is, and the camera's further over there, I can't now exit here because I would cross the camera. It would be like me now, I left here and now all of a sudden I'm le leaving here and it would look very weird on camera. So understanding where the axis of the camera is and then knowing which side of camera things were happening has to stay consistent no matter where the camera moves. So it might feel very awkward if I'm now suddenly talking here and I still need to exit to the right side of camera that needs to, so there's always those moment, that moment of, okay, which way am I exiting? You know, which is, which side of camera? And you're always dealing with, like as an actor, as I'm facing the camera, this is my right and this is my left. But from a camera standpoint, that is camera right and that is camera left. So this is why I can't tell my right from my left because it was like, my right, camera right? And so always having to try and think of those various different things, but keeping track of which side of camera uh, for editing purposes is critical. Some of the new things that have come into play since when I was filming when I was younger, if they did anything handheld, they literally had to like take the camera and, and it was all very unsteady and things like that. Now they have a steady cam. So uh, a steady cam is something that uh, the steady cam operator wears a harness and then it has mechanics within it that allow it to stay steady as you walk with it. So it absorbs that movement. So instead of having to set up all these tracks to put a dolly on and then push the dolly along when you're dealing with uneven ground, which is very tricky, or you know, all those types of things that we used to have to deal with now, they can use a steady cam, and that person can walk over uneven ground. They can go upstairs and follow a person, bring a person down, and it's so it's really uh, saved a lot of time. Steady cams have made a huge difference in particularly shooting outdoor work. Rack focus. Rack focus is basically when the camera has been. Uh, say it has been uptight on something in the foreground and all of a sudden somebody comes into the background and the focus shifts so that the person in the background is instead of blurry now is in focus or vice versa. You're on somebody farther away and then all of a sudden you, you shift to something, somebody steps into frame, something comes into frame closer and you shift the focus quickly to that other person. So it's shifting where the focal point is instead of having a common middle focus point. Regarding sound, 
looping or ADR. ADR stands for automated dialogue replacement. So when sound hasn't been able to be recorded cleanly, when you actually shoot, then you go into a sound booth basically, and you can see the screen of the scene. And with a click tone, it'll click you down. You'll hear beep, 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 and then you'll speak and you have to match your replacement of the dialogue to basically your lips moving. So sometimes you can sort of hear it, um, but it's garbled. Sometimes it wasn't there at all. And so you know what the dialogue was. So you just have to say it so that it matches up there. So you have a lead in time and then you replace the dialogue. On a bell or a bell, whenever you're going to be filming, the assistant director will call, you know, on a bell and a, literally a bell will ring. One bell means you're filming. So if you're on a sound stage uh, and you hear that bell ring, it's like, be quiet because they're gonna be filming. And then when they yell cut, then it'll be, we're off of the bell. So then you'll hear two bell, you'll hear uh, two bells ring. So two bells means you're off the bell. Along with the bell is also a red light. So outside the sound stage, a red light will go on. So if you come to a stage door and a red light is on, it means they're filming inside. So you have to wait until the red light goes off. And if we were on the back lot, we would have a portable red light. And again, it would be kind of out in the street so that anybody approaching the set area would know to stop, stop their vehicle, stop making noise, stop walking, because you never know if you go beyond that light, you could be in frame. The slate. Uh, a clapper board, also known as a slate, clap board, film clapper, film slate, movie slate, or production slate. We've all seen slates. This is one that I just picked up as a prop for something one time, but it says scene, take, roll. So when we had rolls of film, it would say which roll of film, which, which scene. So scene 13, take one, take two, whatever, the date, um, the production company, the director, the cameraman, and sound. So that's basically what the slate looks like. And uh, they now have them digital. So there's digital stuff that will sync up where they are on the camera frame uh, along with where they are on the sound. And then the sound of the slate basically is a audio cue to for the editor to be able to sync the audio with the visual of the film. It is held in front of the camera lens, so the contents of the slate can be read by the editor and helps identify the various takes. Connected with sound, you will also sometimes hear the term MOS. We're shooting this MOS. Basically, that means there's gonna be no sound recorded. Now, MOS actually stands for MIT Out Sound. And when a shot is done without recording the sound, the slate will be marked with the initials MOS to indicate that there is no corresponding soundtrack to be synced to this film take. In early film, many directors and crew were foreign and without sound often sounded like mit out sound because of their accents. So somehow that stuck and so MOS. So you know when that's happening that it doesn't matter. You don't really have to be quiet around the set. Uh, and you just know whatever is happening is being shot for just the visuals of what's going on. Another thing that you'll sometimes hear on a film shoot regarding sound is to get room tone. Now, room tone is the natural noise of your recording environment that's impacted by the materials of the space and any existing background noise. Room tone allows you to make adjustments to sound in editing and will serve as the base for a consistency of sound within a scene. Um, so they, anytime you're shooting in a new set, there's a point where they'll just roll sound. They'll roll like maybe a minute of room tone. So they have that as a base for the sound editor to use and they can reuse that same piece of sound over and over again as needed. Cause sometimes you'll be in a different thing and you've got more echo and you want something. So you want to remove a lot of the extraneous things and come back down to a consistency of sound so they will record room tone. Since we used to shoot on film, at the end of takes, they'd always say, check the gate. And that meant the gate. When shooting on film, you'll often hear the assistant director shout, cut, check the gate. 
This is to ensure that the camera and film is free of any impurities or blockages, a hair in the way, for instance, that would render what's being filmed unusable and therefore call for another take. Uh, so they just check that with the film, make sure the gate was clean, that anything they just shot wasn't gonna be corrupted by a hair or something in there. And if that was clean, we were good to go. Another sound term, a fish pole which is also known as a long boom mic. So when you see someone holding up something or underneath, it's a big long pole with the mic on, that's a fish pole. And just a couple of crew people that often I get asked about. One is like a grip, a grip and a key grip. So the grip department under the supervision of the key grip provides all support systems for lights and cameras. Their two main responsibilities on a film set are to provide support for the camera department through setting up the rigging and to set up lighting rigs for the lighting technicians. So they, they set all the lights up and they also, the camera dolly is maneuvered, moved around by a dolly grip. Uh, and then the key grip is the head grip basically. And then you've got the gaffer and the best boy. The best boy is a senior electrician on a film crew coming second in the hierarchy to the gaffer who is the chief electrician. And the electricians are responsible for the technical side of the lighting. Now, the difference between a grip and a gaffer, grips and gaffers are the workhorses on any film set. While grips handle the mechanical side of the lighting and camera, gaffers are the head electricians and production lighting managers. So those are, those are a couple of the more confusing uh, uh, sort of crew members that you hear and you go, what the heck is a best boy? What the heck is a gaffer? Well, now you know. A piece of equipment that I am familiar with because being on the shorter side, it's something that I became, uh, had to use a lot. It's an apple box and it is literally like a wooden, a wooden crate. They come in quarter inch, half inch, one inch, you know, taller. So anytime you want to raise something up, whether it is a prop, whether it's sometimes the camera will be put up on Apple boxes and actors will get stood on Apple boxes too. If there's too much height differential between two actors and you want to be in closer, you want to do over the shoulders that aren't like on a really just uh, distracting angle, then you will stand the shorter actor on an Apple box so that there is more uh, relative height there and it makes a better shot. And as I'm getting ready to wrap up this segment about all kinds of set lingo, uh, I thought I'd wrap it up with the three terms that you always hear at the end of any rap day. Uh, you'll hear the term, this is the Abbey Singer. The Abbey, Abbey Singer refers to the second to the last shot at a specific film location. It was named after Abbey Singer. Uh, a famous production manager who would alert his crew two shots before the set needed to be collapsed. So when you hear, ah, this is the Abbey Singer, you know there's like two shots left, two setups left. And then the martini shot. A martini or martini shot is the final shot before wrapping the set for the day. It's supposedly called the martini shot because the next shot would be taken out of a glass. <laughs> So then it's like, oh yeah, this is the martini. We're, you know, we're on the martini shot. And everyone goes, oh yay, yay, this is the last shot. And then finally, after you have completed the last shot, you will hear, that's a wrap. So that is used to say that the filming of a movie or television show or one of its scenes is finished. So in this case, for this segment, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me for this segment about the lingo on a film set. I'll be back with more behind the scenes. Thanks for watching.